All right, welcome to part four of the grid tutorial. In the last one, uh, or the last three videos, we got the grid fully set up and we got it highlighting the one you are hovering over, which is pretty slow. And the last thing we need to do is make it so that your player actually walks to the center of the tile so that you can't like walk around in a tile uh, like he's doing right now. So to do that, uh, that logic is actually done inside of, uh, if we go back to the uh, main window here, that's actually done in the top-down controller class. So if we open this up, um, and let me go back and reference my notes, because it's 4 a.m. here and I'm kind of tired, so my brain is like dead. Um, why can't I find my notes? Okay, here we go. Top-down controller. So inside of here, you can see we have this function um, move to hit location, and it is being called from somewhere in the event graph. Yeah, so it's being called from right here. So basically, um, event tick, and how does this work? Yeah, so if the, if the left mouse button is clicked, then it's saying if the hit mount display is not hooked up, then it's getting the hit result under the cursor that you clicked, and it's moving you to that location. So what we want to say is um, don't necessarily move to that location, but figure out where that location or which tile that location's on and then move to that center of that tile. And one thing we need to do real quick um, is you can see, again, it's not checking this, this Boolean value for whether you actually hit something, because if you click in the sky, we don't actually want to walk anywhere. So we just want to check that this is um, true before we continue. So go ahead and move this over a little bit because we just want to kind of add a little branch inside of here and hold down B and left click to create a branch and drag that off of the false and hit that up like there. So now we just, we only are moving if we actually hit something and we can do the same thing down here. Hook that up, hook that up and hook that up and yeah, okay, that's correct. So again, uh, that's just so that if um, we actually click somewhere that's not on the grid, we don't want to try to move anywhere. So now we can uh, come in here and make a couple little modifications to this function and we will be done. So I don't know why this function is so ugly, so we'll make it not ugly. Drag that over there. Um, so again, it's just doing, it's breaking the hit result to figure out where you uh, where you clicked and then it is setting, or it's doing some, it's calling some function to move the character to that location. And we still wanna do this, but we don't wanna directly use um, the goal or the hit location. We wanna use the center of the tile. So unclick on that. And we're gonna just drag this over because we're not gonna be doing this. We're gonna do some stuff in between it first and then we're gonna fill it out. So we wanna save this value, so right click, promote to the local variable and hook this up like so. And we will call this the hit location. So this is where this is where you clicked basically in the world. And we want to convert this to a grid location. So we will say we need to get our get our grid. So we'll say get game mode. And we will cast to our top down game mode. And we want to say uh, get grid. And then from here, we want to basically take this hit location and convert it to a tile. So we already have our functions for that. So it's going to be super easy. So we'll say location to tile. And move this out of the way. And of course, the location that we want is our hit location. So drag that in and hook that up. And we want to do a branch to make sure that we actually clicked on a valid tile. And if we did, then we want to drag off of our grid and we want to say tile to grid location. So again, we're, we're converting the world location to a tile and then we're converting the, the tile to a grid location. And for this one, we actually do want to create 
we do want to select the center so that we get the actual center position of the tile in world space. And we want to hook up the row and the column. And then from there, um, we can call this function to actually have it move to the center. And we don't really need to check valid here. You can check it if you want, but it's kind of guaranteed to be valid because we know that the row and columns are already valid from this function. So it's really no reason to check it. So we can split this goal pin and we can split, uh, split this. And uh, yeah, so the X goes into X, the Y goes into the Y. And the Z we want to stay the same. So we want to use whatever the Z is for this hit location. So just copy that and place it here and hook it up like so, and we should be good to go. So if we go ahead and we run this, you can see if I click down here in the bottom left, um, he goes to the middle of the tile. Now you're probably thinking, oh, he's not exactly in the middle of the tile. And yes, you would be correct. And that is because this simple move to location function, um, it just, it's not, it's that's just the way it works. Cause his, uh, if you look at the character, like his, um, his capsule is like kind of larger than he is. So as soon as like any part of this capsule gets to the location you're trying to move to, it says, oh, he's there. So it's really just an unreal thing. Um, if you're doing like any other type of calculation, um, it would be correct. Or if you want to write your own move to, it would be like, it would be totally perfect. But that's why it like kind of looks a little like he's not in the middle. But you can see if I click, if I keep clicking in this triangle, he's not like trying to continuously update his position because he's like, he's in that tile. As far as you can turn that he's on that tile. Um, so yeah, and if I click outside, of course he doesn't go anywhere. Um, and again, I can like totally make this grid, you know, like tile size 500, number of rows 10,000. And this is just like insanely, insanely optimized. So there's like absolutely no performance impact at runtime. And again, I said this at the very beginning, but make sure that if you're trying to walk around and he's not like walking somewhere, he needs to be inside of a nav mesh. So if you go to show and you click on nav mesh, like this green area is the only area he's going to be valid to walk in. If you want him to be able to walk in all of this, you need to like, you know, oh, oops, not that. You need to click on the nav mesh, which uh, over here, where is it? Nav, this guy, you need to click on the nav mesh and change it so it's bigger. And you can change it to be as big as you want, but he's not going to walk anywhere unless he's on that nav mesh. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, let me turn that off. Yeah, you can make the tile size ridiculously large and it will just, you know, it will just work. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. I know this one was probably uh, pretty confusing for some people, but I tried to explain it the best that I can. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.